When someone has kidney failure, it means they have about 15% of their kidney function left. We talked about GFR, or glomerular filtration rate, on an earlier segment of Health Matters, and kidney failure is defined as a GFR of less than 15, and this is when dialysis is started. Dialysis is meant to do the job healthy kidneys take care of, and this means filtering waste products out of our blood and removing excess fluid. The main things removed from blood during dialysis are electrolytes, mainly sodium, potassium, phosphorus, and bicarbonate. Dialysis removes excess salt and extra fluid and helps control blood pressure. Dialysis is sometimes done for short-term kidney failure that is expected to get better, but most of the time the kidney failure is permanent and dialysis is lifelong. If you're a good candidate for a kidney transplant, you can be put on a waiting list for a new kidney. These are difficult to come by and not enough people are organ donors. There are two main types of dialysis and these are hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. Hemodialysis uses a machine called a hemodialyzer to remove wastes and chemicals and excess fluid from your blood. To get blood to go into the machine, a special access has to be made. Sometimes this is a plastic tube that is placed in a large vein in the neck for a relatively short time, but most of the time a permanent access is made. This is most often done by joining an artery and a vein under the skin to make a bigger blood vessel called a fistula. This fistula is only for dialysis and cannot be used for blood draws, and blood pressure should not be checked on that side if the fistula is in an arm. Dialysis treatments last about four hours, three times a week, and the length of time depends on how well your kidneys work, how much fluid is to be removed, how big you are, how much waste has to be removed, and the type of machine used. The other type of dialysis is called peritoneal dialysis, and it uses the membrane lining the abdominal wall, or peritoneal cavity, to filter out fluid and wastes. There are two kinds of peritoneal dialysis, and these are continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis, or CAPD, and automated peritoneal dialysis, or APD. Continuous ambulatory dialysis is the only dialysis done without machines, and you do this yourself four or five times a day. This consists of having a catheter that goes into your peritoneal cavity, and using that catheter to put a bag of about two quarts of dialysate into your peritoneal cavity, and it stays there for about four or five hours before it is drained back into the bag and thrown away. While the dialysate is in your peritoneal cavity, you can go about your regular activities at home, work, or school. Automated peritoneal dialysis, or APD, is done at home using a special machine called a cycler. This is like CAPD, except that a number of cycles or exchanges occur. These exchanges are done throughout the night while you sleep. Dialysis has been around since the 1940s and has been a regular treatment for kidney failure since the 1960s. Dialysis costs a lot of money and the federal government has paid about 80% of that cost over the years. Dialysis will not cure kidney failure and the treatments are usually lifelong. The average life expectancy for someone on dialysis is 5 to 10 years, but many patients have lived well on dialysis for 20 or even 30 years. The key point is one we've seen again and again and this is prevention. Take advantage of free screenings at community health fairs and make sure the numbers are explained to you. Make sure you have regular visits to discuss prevention with your health care provider. Keep your diabetes in control, exercise regularly, eat a sensible diet, be proactive about your blood pressure, and take your medicines as prescribed. And don't forget to call an elder. They've been waiting for your call. I'm Dr. Arnie Vinio, and this is Health Matters.